Key is the absolute heart of understanding tonal music, particularly the music of the common practice, the music from Bach to Brahms. In tonal music, you are always in a key. The musical term key is well known even by non-musicians, but its importance is underestimated. We Westerners have learned to hear music in a key in the same way we have learned to hear and speak our native language. It is why most people can hear a wrong note, or that the last note of a song is actually the last note of a song. Just close your eyes and listen for a moment to these examples. A key is a collection of seven notes, each with its own name, that have a very specific relationship to each other. This very specific pattern of whole steps and half steps in relation to the tonal center, or first note of the scale, is found in the Ionian mode. You should know this pattern so well that you will mumble it in your sleep. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This specific collection of pitch relationships will always sound like a major scale. It will always create a major key. Keep in mind that not only is each note a fixed distance from its neighboring notes, it also has a fixed relationship with every other note in the scale as well. We will explore these relationships in detail as musical intervals, or the distance between two pitches. For now, our musical intervals are whole tones and semitones. In addition to using scale degree numbers to identify the notes in our scale, we also give them names. This naming system is called solfege and was first used in the Middle Ages. We name each note of the scale Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, we use solfege when we sing because it helps us know where we are in the key. We can also use the names to talk about specific notes in a key. Each note of the key also has a formal name that relates to its harmonic purpose or function. The tonal center, the first note of the scale, is called the tonic. The fifth note of the scale, sol, is called the dominant. Do not take this powerful name lightly. The dominant function does dominate our system of music. Midway between the tonic and the dominant is scale degree 3, called the median. The fifth note down, or a dominant down from the tonic, is fa. This is the subdominant. Midway between tonic and the subdominant is scale degree 6, the submedian. The note above the tonic, re, is called the supertonic, the prefix super meaning above. The note below do, the seventh scale degree, is the subtonic, though I only use this term in a minor key. In a major key, I use the term leading tone. These names are the diatonic functions of each scale degree. Once we build our key, we have constructed a specific musical world in which we can spin melodies and construct chords and sonorities. This world has seven notes and seven notes only. The other pitches simply do not exist in this world. They belong to some other musical world. If I play music in the key of C major, I can tear all of the black keys off of the piano and not even notice or care. They do not exist in the key of C major. It is easy not to play any wrong notes in the key of C major because it is easy not to accidentally hit a black key by mistake. The most important note in a major scale is the seventh note of the scale, T. 
The reason that this note is so important is that it creates a very strong tendency to want to hear the note DO next. T leads to DO, so the note T is called the leading tone. Since this note creates the tendency to want to hear another note follow it, it is also called a tendency tone. We will learn several tendency tones, but the most important is the leading tone, T. This strong tendency to want to hear a specific note occur next is called musical or melodic dissonance. The movement to the note that you want to hear next is called resolution. The note that makes that resolution sound complete is described as being melodically consonant. One thing that contributes to the note T having a tendency to resolve to DO is the fact that it is only a semitone away. This slight distortion of pitch space, the squishing together of musical steps, is the key beacon to our ear as we try to navigate our way around this imaginary, invisible musical space.